morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to be reading from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Seek his will and all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Uh, this is my favorite verse. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory to me, but what it's really saying is um, if you put all your trust in the Lord, uh, no matter what decisions you make, as long as you make it through Him, He will show you, you know, where you need to go. And that's really important to me, just, you know, being a teenager and knowing that, you know, I am going to make mistakes, but the good choices that I do make, um, I know that they will be for Him. And, you know, eventually I will be down the path that I want to be, and um, that, that means a lot to me. So, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for bringing everyone into your place. I pray that you will bless the service, and hope that everyone has a great day. In the name of my prayer, amen. 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 For who am I that you are my Lord of me, that you
Yeah. 
this week, someone, we were having some conversations, someone brought something to my attention. And they reminded me that our church mission, our church vision, this is something that I just need to share every once in a while, but something I need to constantly have put in front of you, which I try to do. You look behind me on the screen. I need to probably change the ball back to get it brighter. But uh, we have this on there all the time, pretty much on the screen. Anytime you look at it, unless we have a special month going on. This is behind us. It, it says, Elvis oh, Community Church, reaching the famous of Pasadena for Jesus through love. Acts 2, verses 41 through 42 through 47, living our victory every day. And I still believe that is our mission and our vision that this church needs to have. I do believe that we need to reach them in, in love. And like I said, love we use as an acronym to mean living our victory every day. In fact, in the welcome pack, you pull the next screen there for me, Steve. I know I don't have this in my notes. But this is what anybody who comes in, this is what uh, we, we tell them about our church when they first come. It says, if you are in search of a church that teaches, preaches, and believes the whole Bible, and and the power and works of the Holy Spirit that you will love our church. So we do believe it. I believe there's still power in the name of Jesus. I still believe the Holy Ghost is power. There's still healing power when there's sickness. Jesus can come down. The Holy Spirit can come down and heal life. That, there, that has not diminished whatsoever. In fact, it's going to get greater as the days go on. Because the Bible says in the last days, what? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Because we believe the best way we can impact the families of our community, and this is what I'm trying to is by living our victory every day, or love. People are searching for something that is real. Something they can connect with and believe in. So we, as a group of believers in Jesus, strive to live our lives in such a way to bring the concepts of the Bible to real life in everyday living. If you haven't picked that up over the past five years, I don't know where you've been. I've been trying to stress that for five years, that we need to do this thing, what? Every single day. Jesus is still the answer. I believe that with everything in me. Jesus is still the answer for all your cares and problems. And we would love the opportunity to share with you how you can experience and live His love and victory. How often? Every day. And of course, this one was on the back of the invite card. It says, hope to see you soon. But on the, on the welcome pack, I need to put in there, thank you for worshiping with us. Or we're glad you worship with us. But that is what I believe. We as a church, we need to be those people who just every day live. Now, now don't get me wrong. I mean, there, you know, sometimes people say, well, I, I want to see the Holy Ghost fall on us. Again, I want to see all that too. But I only want to see the Holy Ghost fall in that way if it truly it spurs us to do something more for Him. I don't want to come to church just to have a, 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 a Holy Ghost showdown or hover down just so I can feel good about myself. Because the thing is, it's not, and I, I don't know if you, if you, hopefully you picked this up over the last five years. It's not about you, and it's not about me. It's about Him. Now again, we need to come and have our battles recharged. I understand that. But it's still not about you, and it's not about me. It's about who? Jesus. It's about Him. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about sharing Jesus Christ with the world around us. But the thing is, we need to do it in our everyday living. Living our victory every day. And then, unfortunately, that's where most of us struggle. That's where most of us fall short. All in church, we can put on the big show. We can put on the big, the big smile, the, the mask. So everybody thinks that we're this and that, but it's what you do when you leave these doors. It's not what you do when you're in here. It's what you do with the life you live outside those doors that will truly make an impact for Jesus Christ. You don't impact the kingdom of God at all being in this building. Now again, what, then what is the purpose of this building? It's for us to come together, for me to share with you what God has laid upon my heart, to encourage you, to equip you, to train you, to teach you. And then you take that, and you just don't say, okay, I've got my, got my Philip for the week, I'm going to go home and just think about what the pastor said. But it's for you to take that out, out into the true mission field, into the true place where Jesus is calling us, out there and share it with those around you by truly living that life before them. Living that victory before them every day. And, folks, and what I'm saying, I know it's not easy. Because if it was easy, 
What's the saying? If it was easy, everybody would do it. And I know it's not easy. But it's the most blessed life. And, you know, we just came off the blessed life. If you weren't here for the series on the blessed life, you need to go on to our Vimeo page, our YouTube page, and all the, the messages are on there talking about the blessed life. Talking about how, how God, He guarantees a blessing on our life. And there's a way to achieve it. It's through what? It's through the shared life. It's through the generous life. It's through the sacrifice life. And, and what we're talking about last week, it's through the sacred life. All that's available, but you can't even get that without living your victory every day. Without living the, the, this, this life of love. I'm going to bring, we read this last week, I'm going to bring this up this week. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I'm reading from the message, the message Bible today. And it says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. In other words, you don't have to be a super duper well for Christian. Let's be honest. How many people in here have also had the thought, I wish I was like so and so Christian? Hey, I'm raising my hand. Because you know what? I thought that. I wish I could be like this minister, that minister. Who in here has ever thought that? And you know what? You don't have to think that. Because the thing is, you, 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 don't, you don't see everything that that person is dealing with in their life. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't live with them every hour of the day and see maybe the struggles they have or the price they have to pay. And, and we sit there. It's amazing how sometimes we really hold some people. And don't worry, there's nothing wrong with holding fellow, fellow Christians up and looking to them as examples. But the thing is, God, God has a life. He has a special life designed just for you. And the thing is, these super duper Christians, they didn't get super duper overnight. And they're probably really young in their life, they're probably not super duper as you think they might be. Because it's a matter of it's what Paul was telling you, is just take your everyday, ordinary life. And here he describes this as you're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for remember we shared about last when we were dealing with the boxes remember the you know, the, the church box the relationship box you know, the marriage and dating box parent child box the, the, the work and school box the private and public box and how too many times we try to segment our lives we try to say, well, at church I do this, and that's what I need to do because I'm at church. But when I'm not at church, I can do this. And I'm here to tell you, folks, that's not right. That's wrong. It's like I shared last week how someone said to somebody, you know, well, you did this in church, and then that's just wrong. No, if it's wrong to do in church, it's wrong to do everywhere. <laughs> and two minutes have taken on this modern-day concept that as long as it's not in church, or as long as it's not around the pastor, or as long as it's not around other Christians, it's okay. Folks, that's a lie. That's where we fail in living our victory every day. It's an everyday walk. It's not just when we're around those who, 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 we, who, who know we profess to be Christians so we try to put on a show. It's about truly living this life every day. That's the way you're going to impact your family. That's the way you're going to impact your workplace. That's the way you're going to impact your school. It's not by putting on a show. It's by being truly real in your life. It's not by putting on a performance. But it's truly living the life. See, too many of us take on a Hollywood mentality when it comes to our life around people. You know, Hollywood spends millions upon millions of dollars to make fantasy seem real. People go to movie theaters and they go, wow, I mean, I love special effects in movies. I, 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 love, I love special effects. The, the, more, the more neat the special effects, the more I enjoy it. Like when I watch movies like Avatar and just different stuff like that, I just go, man, the, the time it took, it just the stuff they do, they're like, wow. But guess what, guys? It's fake. As much as I, I love science fiction, as much as I love, I, I love watching science fiction shows and movies. 
Star Wars. Yeah, huh? And all that started a while ago. And of course, that was laid now. If you remember back when we were younger. Um, they're just gonna, I, I love special effects, but guess what, folks? It's fake. It's not real. And too much of we take hold of it, we think it's real. We watch shows on TV and think they're real. Hey, you know these reality shows, guys? They're fake. Yeah. <laughs> there, it might be, it might be non-stars in there, but everything else about that show is fake. You do know that, right? If I ruined it for you, I'm not sorry. You need to know that. But stuff is fake. No matter how much we make it real, things are fake. These movies, you know, when you watch these reality shows. And too many times, that's how we live our lives. We try to present this thing of a super Christian when we aren't living up to it. And our life show, it comes out, you know, when we say this one thing, we do something else. But what Paul tells us is to take this everyday ordinary life, every aspect of it, and place it before God as an offering. Take every box, take every aspect of our life, and place it before Him as a sacrifice, as an offering before God. Because it says embracing God, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him, and it's the best thing you can do for you. Because he sees the whole big picture. He sees the whole big thing. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, Let every detail in your lives, listen, words, actions, whatever be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Every aspect, every word, every action needs to be what? Honor and glory and praise to Him. And I know, and I, guys, what I'm saying, I know this is hard to do, but it's something... As Christians, we must strive to do. Even when you mess up, you need to what? You need, guess what? You need to start over and try again. That's why He offers forgiveness. And that's why when we do falter and fail, we say, Lord, forgive me. Pick me up, dust me off. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. We can continue down that road. We can never let our, our, the, the imperfection of our humanity ever get in the way of us serving God with a complete and sincere heart. I've been allowed to make excuses for us falling. You know, I'm going to say, allowing, us, allowing this life for us to make excuses for falling short. But I said, even though we are using love as an acronym to mean living our victory every day, we will not be able to accomplish our mission and vision without love, without the true love, living love in action. Not just in word, but in deed and action. Remember, love is more than a feeling. It's more, it's more than just a feeling. It's love and action. It's more than just a word. Love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the well-being of another. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul describes love as a more excellent way than even tongues or even preaching. The New Testament maintains this estimation of love throughout. So when we're talking about living this victory every day, I'm not talk, talking to you about being self-righteous. I'm not talking to you about going out and saying, well, I don't, you know, oh, I'm so good. You're not. And unfortunately, there, there are many so-called Christians who live their life that way. They always want to lift themselves up and tear others down. That's not what I'm talking about either. Our life needs to be a witness so people can see Jesus alive in us. And when they say, you know, when all this stuff is going, how can you still have a smile in your face? How can you still have joy in your heart? How can you still be facing each and every day with just, it seems like a song in your life? And you can, by living this life, then you can open up and say, it's because of this one I know named Jesus. But if all we ever do is go around, oh me, oh my. Don't get me wrong. I'll be praying. I know we're dealing with problems. But, 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 but there, there's a place. You need to take them to like-minded believers. You need, don't need to take them to unbelievers in the workplace and tell everybody what's going wrong in your life. How is that going to save anybody? Why do they want what you got? If it's supposed to be this one who's the answer ain't helping you out. And again, I'm not telling you to be fake at work. That's not what I'm telling you. But, but you need to know where, again, 
We need to do things in the proper way. The Bible says that if we, if we are sick, or things are wrong, we need to call together the elder, elders. You need to call together a like-minded believer. Share those burdens with them. Share them with the Lord. You come together in prayer. And let the prayer of faith begin to change things in your life. Instead of complaining about it, talking about it all the time, talk about somebody who looks back to pray with you about it, to where all of a sudden God can come in and do the work that needs to be done. But unfortunately, in today's modern society, we all like living in misery. And I don't know why. But what we need to live this life, and it needs to be done in, in a love, in an act of love. But not self-righteousness. We need to reach out to them in love and live this victory before them. But I have three questions I want to ask this morning. And, and all this goes back to, to the original message that I spoke when we begin to share this mission and vision. How are we going to accomplish this thing? How, how, how are we going to how are we going to accomplish this, this love? Living this love? Living our victory every day? Well, there's three ways we can do that. First off, how do we know what love is? How can we fully understand what it is? It's by following Jesus' example. And I cannot stress that enough. In other words, what he did, we need to do. And here's what I mean by that. In Acts chapter 10, verses 38 and 39, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses of all these things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed and hanged on a tree. Now this, of course, this is, these are the disciples talking here. That This is the writer of Acts talking here, and how they said you know, Jesus did this, that he went about healing, healing all who were oppressed. You would even say, we have the hope for the world. Are you saying, you're saying, Pastor, are you saying that I can go out and lay my hands on somebody to be healed? Yes, I'm telling you that. Jesus told them in Mark chapter 16, we're the last part of that. You know, he, he talks about how you know, we, freely, we freely receive, freely give. And he talked about how, you know, I'm going to send you out. There won't be anything that will hurt you, but go out and, and heal the sick. Cast out demons. But if you remember, several months ago, we had a service where when Jesus sent out the 70, how he sent them out. I called him and said, whoever wants this anointing on them to come on up, we're going to pray that God will let his anointing fall upon you so you can go out in his name and do literally the command of Jesus. And again, when we're going out, we're not going out and saying, oh, look how awesome and wonderful. Because again, it's not about who. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about saying, oh, aren't they a super duper? No, it's always about bringing and pointing everything up to who? To Jesus. And that's so many times where the church falls short of bringing glory. And even pastors, even, even so-called Christians, they fail to have a finger constantly pointing up to heaven and say, it's not about me, it's about him. Oh, they'll sort of do it in a somewhat humble way. Oh, it's really not about me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> there's true humility and there's fake humility. Give him the praise, but keep on the hand plans. Let, let, let the hand clap come. They give Jesus the praise. But I, I, I didn't do something wonderful in his name, didn't I? You see, you, you, you see some, it seems like people just always somehow someone need to what they get about who? Themselves. And, that, and that's what this whole life is, is contrary to. It's not about making it about yourself or bringing, bring, bringing um, glory to yourself or bringing attention to yourself. It's always about a point. It's always about pointing people to who? To Jesus. And the biggest way we can do this is found in John 13, verses 40, 34 through 35. It says, so I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You say, well, Pastor, how does that do it? Because Jesus, through his life, he showed his love. He told his disciples when he took on a robe one night, he told them to sit down and, and he grabbed a, 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 a basin of water and began to wash their feet. I want you to understand when Jesus began to do that, he was doing something that, 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 the, that the most menial slave in the household did because it was the dirtiest job to do. Because, you know, today we sort of have shoes we wear, like this, if you're a normal person. If you're most skinny well, you wear what she's got on. <laughs> And every time she stubs her toe, what do I tell you? <coughs> I said, that wouldn't happen if you got a pair of shoes on. I said, no, not. <laughs> but. This is for sandals. Uh, 
because, because they didn't have this back then. But, but, but also because of the world they lived in, that was, that was the main footwear. Even though it wasn't worse, they, they were sandals, but yet they weren't. They were things to try to protect their feet, but they had openings because where they lived, that air flowed through. But yet, what's where they were living, you know? I mean, think about it. Where do people go to the bathroom a lot of times? Where do animals go? And then, you know, they had donkeys, they had horses, they had cows. And they were walking through the, you know, they, they were taking through the streets of the city. What do you think would happen? If, if, a, if a cow would say, I gotta use the bathroom, get me out to the field. <laughs> or a horse, it lifts up its tail. <laughs> Have you ever been downtown to these, these horse carriages? Oh, yeah. If you happen to ride on one and all of a sudden it's gotta go, I mean, it doesn't say, excuse me, I'm gonna use the bathroom, you may want to turn your eyes right now. <laughs> This is what's laying on the streets. Their feet is walking through this dust and through this muck. It's all in this stuff. So, 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 so their feet... Yeah. So, the lowest person in the house, the lowest servant, the one who had the least amount of honor, the one who they considered the most insignificant, it was their job to wash the feet of the other people in the house. You put the, the place to feed in the water, to, to rub all this muck on their hands with the water, get, you know, and all this stuff. And yet Jesus himself, what did he do the night before he gave his life? That's what he did. Peter at first refused him. He said, Lord, you'll never wash my feet. You know, basically saying, you're my Lord and Master. You're never going to do that. He says, Peter, if I don't do this, you won't have any part of me. He said, well, Lord, basically, said, Lord, don't stop at my feet. Wash all of them. Wash my head and everything. You know, if this is what it takes, I want to be totally worse. But Jesus was giving, giving an example. Jesus, he said, yes, I am your Lord and your master. But if I am your Lord and your master, come down and I humble myself as a servant. And I do this. He says, you ought to do the same to one another. The way we truly know that we are children of God is what? In how we reach out and help each other. My job as a pastor isn't for you to come here and take care of me, it's for me to be there for you. The same it is it's for us in the world. We're, we're to be servants. Now again, I'm not telling you to be a doormat, but we are to be servants. We're to live this before them every day. We're, you know, <laughs> we're to live this love, we're to have this love for each other, just as he loved us. He loved us so much he gave his life for us. He gave his best. He gave his all. Do you give your best in your all? See, he showed, Jesus showed living his victory. He showed love through love. His love, his actual love, the actual love in his life spurred him to live his victory every day. And he showed that that's what he wants us to do. So number two. How do we begin to love more effectively? First off, by following the command that he gave. And then by receiving the promise. In Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Over the, over the last little part of this first part of this year, what do we do? We dealt with what? The baptism in the Holy Spirit. See, I've been trying to get you prepared. I've been trying to, to, to equip you to truly be the child of God that God wants you to be. I can't make you do it. God can't make you do it. You can, you can choose to receive this gift. You can choose to reject this gift. That is completely not only up to you. But he's saying that there is a promise that the Father has to be. And that, that promise is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's the infillment of the power of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And see, and that's where we find our place, ourselves too many times. Instead of truly being about the Father's business, Jesus, are you coming back tomorrow? We're only worried about ourselves. So because the disciples are this, even, even now that they were still looking for something that was going to benefit who? Them. And them now. 
Will you at this time, Lord, restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in, put in His own authority. But in verse 8 he says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in, Judea, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So again, he's saying, you need to live this life every day. You need to live it. You need to be these witnesses. You need to tell people about who? About me, not me. Pastor, about him, Jesus. I just want to clarify. That's what you can show you that I find out here. See, one of the keys for us to love, to live our victory every day, is to have the Holy Spirit dwell in us in his fullness. And having His fruit and gifts living and working in us. He was promised to us by the Father. And Jesus commanded them to wait for that promise. And if you think the early church fathers needed the Holy Ghost, what makes you think that we don't? <coughs> yeah, they had to get stuff guarded. But hey, they had, they, they had to go out to a world who truly, well, first of all, where they started, this, the world they started in knew who God was. The real God. That they knew who the God of creation was. Because they worshiped Jehovah, which is who the disciples worship. But God was going to send them out to a pagan world. And I hate to say it, most people in the United States anymore, most people, and, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm saying that purposely, our nation really is not a nation of uh, Christians anymore. Right. But most people anymore really don't know anything at all about God. That's right. Or about Jesus. I get amazed at how many people you talk to have never, ever been in the church. Or the ones that have, it's still. Or they've been in the church and they've been so turned off because either because of attitudes inside of the church or, or, or people living a fake life. <clears throat> you guys, that's why I'm trying to tell you so much. That's why I've been trying to tell you the past five years. It's got to be done every day. It's not enough what you just do on Sundays. But it's you truly living that life before people are ready. And here's the thing. You may mess up at times. When you mess up, fess up to them. Say, you know what? Say, I said something I shouldn't have said. And as a Christian, if that shouldn't have came out of my mouth, you know, I, I'm going to ask God to forgive me, but I ask you to forgive me too. See, if people would see more people like that in the world, it would begin to make a difference. Instead of just, just thinking, well, I'm okay no matter what I do. But the way we can love more effectively is by receiving the promise of number three. How do you know that love is active in you? Now, we've been dealing with this over the last little while. By following an example here in the church. When we were talking about the blessed life, all of this deals with what I'm going to be about this portion of scripture that I have on the that's going to say behind me. I'm following Acts 41 through 47. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And then verse 42, which is what our mission is based off of, starts there. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and the prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and they had all things common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continuing daily, see again, it was a what? A daily walk. So continuing daily with one, with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. It all comes back to the early church, the way they started out. It was a daily walk with them. They took their ordinary life. They're eating. They're sleeping. They're going to work. They're staying at home. They're just sitting around life and presenting to God in worship and as a sacrifice. 
This is the way we're going to impact this world. This is the way we're going to carry out this mission. It, it, it's not by how many programs we have going on. Don't get me wrong. There's, I know there's programs that probably need to get started here. And as God speaks to people and begins to move upon them, see me as the pastor, there's only so many things I can oversee. And what could you do me to oversee when, you, when actually God's placing upon your heart, you need to be the one to step forward and let God use that ministry through you to touch others. It's not about a one-man show here, folks. It's about a church together reaching the world. It's about a church together reaching our family, our friends, our community. It's not about the pastor doing it. It's my job to equip you. It's my job to train you. It's my job to encourage you with the Word of God to go out and do what God tells you to do. And to keep on pointing you down the right road. But it's your job to fulfill the vision and the mission of living that life every day. Of living that picture every day. If I could do it for you, I would. But guess what? I'd falter and fail too because I'm human. I'm imperfect. Thank God I have a lot more better days than I do bad days. But guess what? I do have bad days. There's days when God has to humble me. Not that I can say I truly do anything that's truly sinful. Because if he does, he'll, he'll, he'll take care of it. He'll come down and give you a... In my stage in life, in my walk, he will come give me a big old slap in the back of the Holy Spirit, slap in the back of the head, and I'm going to go, okay, Lord, you know it. <laughs> But we have to live it every day. This is what we need to do. See, one of our greatest attributes, the quality of our church, this church here, and you've heard me say this, and I'll say it over and over again, we do act like a large family. We really do. We behave and operate like a family. I've never, I've never seen it so much in a church before as I have in this one. And that is to be commended. But I'm here to tell you, never take it for granted. Strive to hold on to it. Strive to always do that because that is <laughs> that, that is the greatest thing God has blessed this church with. Is the fact that when, when hurting people come in or if they're, even if they're not hurting, is your, you, you, you make them welcome. You reach out to them. You wrap your arms around them. See, the shared life. But it's got to be more than just what in here. And the majority of us, we do it more than just in here. But we need to even do more to strive to be like the church that I described above. Like I said, which will lead us to the blessed life. And I want you to you see, you begin to see how all this stuff is tied together. How it all intertwines. How God's been just been moving upon my heart as your pastor to just encourage you in all these areas to work. It all just begins to work together. They're just not random messages here and there. And honestly, to be, be honest with you, I knew God was doing something, and until like, someone brought this my attention about the mission and vision, when I look back over the original message, I sat there, I look and I said, wow. I said, God, that's what you've been having us dealing with constantly. I said, without me, even, to be honest, without me really even realizing it, But God, he, he, he has an awesome plan for us here at El Bethel. But the only way we're going to honestly achieve it is through living our victory every day and to do it in an attitude and a spirit of love. And I want to close, and that's musicians come, I want to close with just two portions of Scripture. The first one is 1 John 3. 18 through 19. It says, Dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. We need to what show love and action. The actual verb of love that unselfish, benevolent concern for another that needs to be active in our life, but also the living our victory every day. The love is the active man. We can't just say it. We need to live it. We need to put it 
in action. And here's something again that the Bible says about love. And I'm heading to this a little bit in the definition of love when I said about 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, chapter, um, chapter 13, verses 1 through the first part of verse 8. This again is coming from the message. I love how he just sort of says it here. It says, if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but I don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith to say to a mountain jump and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor, and even go to the state to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love. I've got no word. So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. It's got to be the motivating factor, folks. Not the love that the world thinks love is, but the love that our Lord and Savior showed us through the life that he lived, living this love the way that he declares. And it says in verse 4, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others. Is it always me first? <coughs> Gee, does that sound familiar to something we've been talking about today? doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others revel, we don't take pleasure in people falling and failing and messing up. Takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps on going to the end. Love never dies. And in the other, in the King James, it's love never fails. Her charity never fails. We can impact this world, church. And we can do it one life at a time. We don't have to do it a thousand at a time. Because in all honesty, most of us aren't going to impact a thousand people at a time. But you could impact somebody, one person at a time. Do you remember when I showed you the one little video that if each Christian would just impact one person each year? Oh, would you grab one person, you mentor them, you disciple them to be a, a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. And then the next year, you grab someone else and then they grab someone. Do you realize within 32 years we could reach the whole world for Jesus Christ? 32 years. We could reach over 7 billion people. And that's just touching one life. Talking about doing something that's super new. And that's what this living this life for every day. So I'm telling you now. But it's got to be done every day. It's got to be that effective witness every day. You going out, putting your faith out there for others to see and witness. But let it be the true faith. Let them truly see Jesus alive in your life. And make sure you're living that life also. So as a church, I'm calling you. I'm directing you. I'm encouraging you. I'm teaching you. I'm instructing you. To live your victory. Live, live the salvation the Lord has given you. Live in that freedom. Live in that victory. See, the devil's going to try to come in and try to cut your feet out from underneath of you. The church, don't let it. 
don't let him. Tell him, say, I don't care what it takes, what it costs, but I'm going to keep on serving the Lord. Like I said, and when you mess up, fess up to it. And then keep on going on, keep on pressing on. Because when you fess up to it, you'll grow and you begin to change. But the key to winning this world is through love. That word in action. Lord love, living every turn of day, that acting and being active in our lives. We stand this morning. And it's done through serving this one that this song talks about. It's done through keeping your eyes upon Jesus. And this morning, I want to encourage you as we sing this song. If God's been speaking to your heart through this message, I want you to come forward. Come forward and say, Lord, I'm once again in professing and declaring I'm going to live a life of love. It's going to be the word in action, but also, Lord, that, that word where, where we look at where it means, living our victory every day. Lord, I'm going to live my victory every day. I want my life to truly be a witness. I want my life to truly point to Jesus Christ. So you know, like I said, it's not about you, but it's about you focusing others on Jesus. I believe that's what God's called us back to do. To focus this life, this Christian life, this walk back to Him. Point it back to Him. So you do me a favor, turn on this. About getting back to the basics. And just simply declaring Jesus and showing people Jesus. He's the one that will change lives. I'm going to need to do everything I'm going to point out people to him. So if that's you this morning, as we sing this song, so that I know where you are. We sit there and we sing this song. Jesus. Oh! 